I like the part where they make him go small. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your Everyday Nerd B-Sides Editions. I'm your host, Zach Snyder, and all the B-Sides take a look at anything and everything in the same format as your Everyday Nerd. They're just shorter, unsponsored episodes. As we continue our road to Endgame, it's time to take a look at the longest phase in the MCU, Phase 3. Beginning with Ant-Man and ending with Endgame, half of the MCU lies within this phase. Now, I've already covered Black Panther, which happens a little bit later, so you can go check that out if you haven't already. But as far as Ant-Man goes, this is a film that I didn't see when it came out. In fact, I just watched it for the first time sometime last year before I saw Infinity War. I just recently rewatched it, and well, I, I guess let's take a look at it. Imagine a soldier size of an insect. For those who don't know anything about it, 2015's Ant-Man is the 12th film in the MCU and was directed by Edgar Wright. LOL psych! It was supposed to be directed by Edgar Wright and instead it was directed by Peyton Reed, the same man that brought us Bring It On. Bring It On is a high school comedy drama. Wait a second. We'll talk about that in a couple weeks. Ant-Man is mostly a standalone origin film focused on Scott Lang, an ex-con who just got out of prison. While he wants to get straight, nobody will hire him. Well, except for Baskin Robbins. But that doesn't end up turning out so well either. So his friend Luis encourages him to join his heist team. They end up on a mission to steal something that is none other than the Ant-Man suit. A suit created by Hank Pym in the 1980s, which gives you the ability to shrink and grow in size. At this point, the film gets a little wacky in plot. Scott is arrested. So Hank Pym helps him get out of jail so that he can visit Cross Industries, who is harnessing similar technology. Jeff Bezos becomes the Hornet, and it's Scott's job to defeat him while also avoiding the cops. The main issue with Ant-Man is that it's fine. It's just fine. There's not a lot in this film that makes it particularly special. With many of the Phase 3 films, there are multiple things that I can point to and say, that's why I really enjoy this film. That's why you're special. That's why I like you. With Ant-Man, I really can't do that. For starters, the villain here is just not interesting at all. He's very similar to Obadiah Stane from the first Iron Man movie. He's just a dude in a similar suit to Ant-Man. His character is boring, and I, I really can't remember anything about him except the fact that he looks exactly like Jeff Bezos. I do like that this is kind of a heist film. The heist at the beginning is pretty dope. Unfortunately, they don't really do anything similar later on, and it just becomes another standard superhero movie. The comedy is probably the best aspect of Ant-Man, but that's not to say that the comedy is great. There's a decent amount of jokes that are funny. I do love the Baskin Robbins gag, but there's also a decent amount of jokes that just don't hit at all. All of Scott's friends are mostly annoying and not funny, especially Luis, who is uh, from the movie Chips. He has an iconic scene in that film, I'll be taking a look at that at some point in the future. <laughs> but like a lot of side characters in the MCU, I ended up just not caring about them. And that also includes Hank Pym. I don't really care about him, I just don't. His daughter, who becomes the Wasp in the second movie, is pretty solid though. And I do end up liking her and Scott's relationship a bit, but all of the old 1980s talk that's mainly there to bring this movie into the MCU, while it's needed, yes, it's just not something that I particularly cared for. We do get Sam the Falcon in this film, which is pretty cool. It's a nice way to bring Ant-Man into later films, and they do have a pretty good scene together. I also do enjoy the scenes where Ant-Man technology is utilized. It makes for some really cool set pieces and special effects, but I also wish that they had leaned into it more to make this film really stand out. I fully believe had Edgar Wright been given the opportunity to direct this like he was supposed to, we would have gotten a much better directed film. My personal favorite part about Ant-Man, though, has nothing to do with the super heroics, nothing to do with the Ant-Man ability, or even the comedy, nothing to do with any of the side characters or the filmmaking. It's the family aspect of it. I love Scott's relationship with his daughter Cassie, something that continues to be great in the sequel as well. They have so many cute moments, and it's really the only reason I would actually suggest watching this film. I wish I was kidding, but I'm not. And that's really where I have to end it at that. Like, Ant-Man is mainly a family film. 
It's really good to watch with your family, and that's about it. I've seen this movie twice now, once with my family, once with some friends, and it was much better with my family because with my friends, we just ended up bored half the time and ripping on the movie the rest of the time. If you've never seen it, I'd say watch Ant-Man at least once. That way you can get it within the context of the MCU. Some of the comedy is worth it, and at least you'll get the Scott and Cassie moments. If you're re-watching the MCU for Endgame, I would argue that you can absolutely skip it. It's probably something that I won't be re-watching anytime in the near future. But anyways, that's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go hit that like button. If for a reason you didn't like it, hit that dislike button. Let me know down in the comments, what are your thoughts on Ant-Man? I know a lot of people like this movie and a lot of people just don't like this movie. It's very, very split in the middle there. But let me know down in the comments what your thoughts on it. If you want to see more episodes of Your Everyday Nerd, hit that subscribe button and I will catch you next time. Goodbye.